Hi, Chadwick Anderson here from Jura, Hungary, and I invite you to journey through the Stations of the Cross with me here in Jura. Uh, whether you're joining us today because you're just curious to see more of Jura, welcome, or if you're here to do, take a short journey through the final moments of Jesus uh, in the last week of his life before crucifixion, uh, welcome. I uh, pray that these moments will be a blessing as you remember not only that Jesus went through these things, but that the motivation and the heart of Jesus as he went through these things is to reveal the love of God for you, for humanity, for creation that was in need and is in need of his redemptive work and uh, that you would feel the invitation to join this kind of redemptive work this year and throughout your life. May these moments be a blessing. Let's join together as we read Station One. Here we are at Station One. It's called the Judgment of Jesus. And so we read from the scriptures from uh, John. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at the place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. Crucify him, they cried out. Away with him, away with him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. From Luke 23, verses 26 and on. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him, and they made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Jesus takes up his cross. Station 3, we remember the reason they invited Simon of Cyrene to carry the cross for Jesus. We read from Mark chapter 15. And the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. They called together the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! Then they struck his head with a reed. They spat upon him, and they knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him in this way, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and they put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. fourth station. Remember the tradition holds that Jesus would have seen his mother while carrying the cross. And so we remember the moment where they were spoken to by the prophet Simeon from Luke chapter 2. It says, And the child's mother and father were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed, 
so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your own soul too. Here at Station 5, we're invited to contemplate again how Simon of Cyrene offered or was made to carry the cross of Jesus. And tradition honors Simon in many ways. But this particular arti artist reminds us, you too can be Simon. We're invited to be people of compassion and the word compassion literally means to suffer with. And as Christians, we hold it as an honor when we are invited to carry the cross of another person, to share in their suffering, to suffer with in the ways that it reveals the love of God. May that be part of our experience as we come near to Jesus. May he show us how we are invited carry the cross of others around us. In many churches, there's a tradition of a woman named Veronica who saw the suffering of Jesus and offers him her veil to wipe his tears and his sweat. So station number six, we remember the heart of a woman like Veronica the heart we're invited to have, to look at the face of God, to notice the way he suffers in a world that is broken by sin, and to offer what we can to Jesus in the ways that we serve others, things that might lessen the suffering of those whom we see Jesus in. We hear the prophet Isaiah 53 verses 1 and 2, who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hid their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. May we notice the suffering of Jesus in the lives of others around us today. There's tradition, as we come to Station 7, that Jesus fell three times as he carried the cross. And here we remember the second time. It's a tradition that reminds us that Jesus is familiar with the fall of sin and living in a world where the burden of sin is so great. We hear the words from Lamentations, Chapter 3. I am one who has seen affliction under the rod of God's wrath. He has driven and brought me into darkness without any light. He has blocked my ways with hewn stones. He has made my paths crooked. He has made my teeth 
grind on gravel and made me cower in ashes. As we approach the moments of the cross, it's good to remember the brokenness of our world and the burden of sin that requires redemption. For station eight, we remember again the women we heard about earlier in Luke 23, where Jesus says, weep for yourselves and for your children. From the scripture it says, a great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. And they will begin to say, The mountains fall on us, to the hills cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? It's a good moment for us to ask ourselves, are we going through these moments just being religious, being the people we are expected to be? crying out for Jesus? Or do we have the context that Jesus weeps for? A world in need of redemption. A world so broken they crucified the Son of God. Let's remember as we move forward. As we approach Station 9, we're invited to remember as Jesus falls for the third time in tradition. And they hold that the third moment of Jesus falling is time for us to reflect on the fallenness within his church and the burden he carries for the weight of those people who are involved in church and part of the church and yet missing out on knowing his love and his life and so we read from the book of lamentations as we lament the fallenness of his church it is good for one to bear the yoke in youth to sit alone in silence when the lord has imposed it to put one's mouth to the dust there may yet be hope to give one's cheek to the smiter and to be filled with insults for the Lord will not reject forever although he causes grief he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love for station 9 we remember the steadfast love of Jesus and of God for even us in the church when we are missing the point Let's be reminded of his love today. As we approach the 10th station, we remember back to the beginning of this journey. From the book of Matthew, they say, And the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They stripped someone of their clothes, removing the layers of who they were, who they have been. And so as we join the journey of Jesus to the cross today, we're invited to allow ourselves to be stripped of the identities that we sometimes put in the way, stripped of the self that gets in the way of vulnerability and so we join a Jesus who is allowed to be stripped of his garments we come before Jesus in these moments vulnerable knowing he sees us the true us underneath what we present to the world sometimes Lord see us now
here at Station 11, we are invited to remember the moment as Jesus was being nailed to the cross. And as the artist here reminds us, it was love, not nails, that kept him on the cross. As we read from the book of Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so easily. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. We remember that it was the love of God revealed in Jesus that keeps him on the cross as we continue on to the next station. Here at Station 12, we are invited to reflect on the actual moment where Jesus dies on the cross. From Scripture, from noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, that is, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. So Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. Here at Station 13, we remember the tradition that Jesus was taken off the cross and placed on his mother's lap from Scripture. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking on from a distance they had followed jesus from galilee and had provided for him among them were mary magdalene and mary the mother of james and joseph and the mother of the sons of zebedee we reflect on what it would have been like for those closest to jesus and especially his own mother to see his dead body coming off the cross. Not only the one they saw as the Messiah, but the one whom they loved as a son, as a brother, as a friend. In this final station of the cross, station 14, remember the moments where Jesus' body was taken and laid in the tomb. From the book of Matthew we read, when it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. 
as we close our time reflecting on the final moments of Jesus as he's laid in his tomb we look forward to what may be yet to come the moments we need the moments we desire the anticipation that something else can still happen when everything looks like death and with these in our heart and our mind we head into anticipation of resurrection.